Hello, you beautiful people. I've been working in the debt management industry for over 20 years now. And for the most part, what I try and do is coach people into being fair with debt management. So not being overly aggressive, but at the same time, getting people out of debt and not debt out of people. It really bugs me, I guess, when I see then so much misinformation online, because in the, as somebody in the industry, I get it that people who are in debt don't know a lot of the stuff that we know. So when you get somebody who's telling you what they think they know, but they're getting it completely wrong, that can lead you into a dangerous place. Because if you follow their advice, then you're potentially going to end up either with with a bailiff knocking at your door or deeper into a problem debt or even committed to prison. So it's really important that people really understand whether something is truth, whether it's misinformation and where people get their, their facts from. And quite often you see with some of the people giving this advice that they don't actually quote their sources. So I'm going to do a reaction video today and we're going to look at one case in point. So let's get on with a reaction of Andy the Gabby Cabby. Council tax bailiffs have gone too far. Council tax is becoming a rather large problem in all our lives. You could call it a cost of living issue, most definitely. The rates are going up all of the bloody time. Should just say there that that's because the cost of things like adult social care, libraries, swimming pools, heating, that's all going up as well. So it's not just that the council wants to raise the money every year, it's the fact that everything else is going up as well. So if you look at the government's goal to have 2% inflation, if that is the case, then it means that everything is going to be at least 2% more expensive next year. And depending on what that 2% translates to in pounds, shillings and pence, but that's how much the, the council has to put their rates up by to keep it paying for those local services. There is a rule in place whereby if they want to put it up by an amount, they have to have a referendum to see if it's agreed with and that actual ceiling has been increased. Yeah, that's very true. The Chancellor of the Exchequer um, did raise the ceiling. It used to be 3.99% that they could raise it by without having a referendum. And then it went up to 4.99%. But in special circumstances, the council can actually apply to the government to increase it by higher than that without holding a referendum. It's a very big argument out there whether we should pay council tax at all. Yes, you should pay council tax unless you've got a valid exemption under the law. The Local Government Finance Act and the Council Tax Administration and Enforcement Regulations make it incredibly clear that there is a legislative duty to pay tax. It's in the law. You have to pay council tax unless you fall under one of the exemptions. A lot of people are going to be ignorant and then they let it get out of control and then it gets to the bailiffs and that's where things can get nasty. So you will have had a number of reminders. It will have had to have gone to court, albeit that's a, normally a bulk process. And you would have been advised that the council was going to the court to apply for a liability order, which adds additional costs on. And you would have been sent a, a notice of enforcement by the enforcement agent, by the bailiff. So is it getting nasty? Well, this is the process that's set out in law. And unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, depending on, on the, the use case, we have a democracy in this country. And if you want something in the law changed, then you campaign the government and whoever whoever says, whichever party says that they will look at that law and change it, that's who you vote for. And if most people don't vote with you, then it doesn't happen. We've all got this issue with council tax, haven't we? I mean, take uh, Harangi Council. I don't know what issue it is, but let's listen on and see if we can find out. They've been given an absolute slamming in the press. Yeah, the press quite often gives debt collection a slamming. Sometimes it's warranted, sometimes it is justified, but most of the time it's ignorant and sensationalist. They genuinely don't know what they're talking about. They're not specialists in this area, so they say aggressive debt collectors when actually what they mean is debt enforcement. Collectors are something completely different. Why is that important? Am I splitting hairs? Well, actually, if you get a letter from a debt collection agency and you think it's a, a debt enforcement agency, which is what that language leads you to do, then you're less likely to engage with it when actually a phone call could prevent a lot of this from, from proceeding on to, uh, to use Andy's words, nastier part of the process. They've actually uh, handed over something like 8,000 sets of information to council tax bailiffs in the last financial year. This is where people have fallen behind on their council tax or haven't paid it and the council have gone, right, fetch. 
giving it to their attack dogs. See, that's not really helpful either. The, the bailiff, the enforcement agent, is like the executive arm of the justice system. The council would have put your case to a magistrate. The magistrate would have said, yes, I'm quite happy that that person actually does owe this debt, grants a liability order, and then the liability order is given to the enforcement agency to go out and collect the money on behalf of the local authority. Now, if you'd have rung up the council prior to that and had a conversation with them about your situation, then you may have been able to avoid it getting to that stage. But if you just don't talk to them, then the process will continue to escalate. And it's as simple as that. So, I mean, 8,000, I don't know what the population of Haringey is. So is, is 8,000 1%? Is it 10%? There's no context to Andy's numbers there. So I can't tell you if 8,000 is a lot or not. And then out of all the people who didn't pay, how, how many didn't pay? Is it 50,000? Therefore, 8,000 isn't a lot to proceed to that stage. Age, or is it 8,000 and they've passed all of them over? You, you need context on this stuff. Just saying they passed 8,000 cases over to their attack dogs doesn't really help you when you're looking at this. And in fact, if you're already a little bit scared about the process, what it's probably serving as is reinforcement bias to tell you that actually this is something that you should be scared of and shouldn't get involved with and shouldn't pick up the phone for. That's absolutely not the case. And they've been absolutely criticised for it, been told you can't do it, don't do it. Uh, every They can do it, it's in the law. Council is guilty of it all over the place and that's where your real problems start. Again, with the negative language, every council is guilty of it. It's not guilty its application of the law. What do you do when your council tax has been handed over to council tax bailiffs? Well, the simple answer is do not deal with the bailiffs because that process of handing it over isn't lawful. Yeah, it absolutely is. And it's provided for in the Council Tax Administration and Enforcement Regulations of 1992. Um, I'm not going to go into the too much detail on the legislation itself. If you want to know that, go and have a look at, there's a guy called Daniel Shen Smith. His channel is called The Black Belt Barrister. And he really delves into the law in, in, in his videos and he's done some on council tax as well. So right rather than, than, than just repeat what Dan's already done. I'll just put a link down below so you can go and have a look at some of his videos on it. I want to read you a little piece of text here. Councils across England and Wales are increasingly turning to the use of private debt collectors to collect council tax. But one little element they appear to have not considered is they are not allowed to delegate their powers to collect tax to private corporations. The only official body with the authority issued by the Crown to collect the tax is the Council. The coat of arms issued to the Council gives them the authority to collect tax on behalf of the Crown Corporation and affords to them the status as a billing authority. This authority is not something that could be handed out to other corporations willy-nilly. The council simply don't have the authority to delegate that council tax collection authority to a third party, in this case, a debt collector. So it's unlawful. Okay. So they absolutely do have the power. Otherwise, you wouldn't have every local authority in the, in the country actually following this process. It's provided for in the law. And you notice that Andy doesn't actually qualify where he got that information from. He just says, I want to read you this little bit of text. I mean, that could have been written by a 12-year-old as a theoretical school project. I'm sure that no official text is going to have um, phrases like willy-nilly in them. So again, just be careful about where you get your advice from. I would suggest that a cab driver between runs down to Gatwick isn't as good a source as the law or as a barrister such as Dan Shen Smith, black belt barrister, or even somebody like me who spent most of my working life working in debt management and and I've studied this legislation on more than one occasion. Yeah, if you get into trouble, you have to keep it with the council anyway. That's absolute priority. Deal with the council, don't deal with anyone else. But if it gets to the bailiff, then what you have to do is force them to give it back to the council. I think it's something Something like after 30 days, something like that. If I don't get you there, they give it back anyway. It's all, all very fine and well to say that, but if you go into your house with a couple of bags of shopping and you're coming back for a couple more and the enforcement agent, the bailiff, actually turns up, then they can walk into your property. So these guys and gals are civil enforcement agents. They're not allowed to break into your house. But if you leave the door wide open, they can come in and, yeah, absolutely, they'll start listing down the goods that you've got, do a, you know, maybe a, a taking control of goods order, depending on your attitude and whether you're, you're willing to pay or not. But then those goods technically, 
basically you're not allowed to do anything with them you can't sell them you can't damage them it's called a four letter process it works very similar to the three letter process it's a four letter process you basically go through the motions and you say i'm not going to deal with you stop bothering me stop harassing me send this back to the council and i will deal with them the council actually have or, or they give the impression that they will only accept certain payments and all this kind of thing utter garbage they put they try that on for ages to try and get you to bend to their will but eventually of course you can negotiate something with them you can also negotiate the same thing exactly the same thing with the enforcement agent and as for the four letter process go, go ahead and try it if you want um it's, that's not my advice I, I'd, I'd say pick up the phone before it even gets that far and tell them what your situation is and if you're in a really bad financial situation then don't take my word for it i'm i'm not a, a qualified debt advisor so i can't provide authorized debt advice but there are plenty of people who can so i'll, I'll link to like national debt line and step change below go and talk to one of those folks and and they'll they'll tell you exactly what you are and, and aren't entitled to do it's also th- uh, a thing called a section 13a officer as well they don't like you to know about them because it means you can write to the section 13a officer and ask for a little bit more discretion he's absolutely right there is section 13a um that allows the council in effect to write off a, po- a portion of your council tax it's not intended for day-to-day use it is for exceptional circumstances and again if you speak to uh, an authorized debt advisor so again national deadline step change they will be able to advise you on whether section 13a is applicable or not but let me just say that it's actually applicable in very few cases think of this four letter process do not deal with the bailiffs and if you've got council tax trouble Best of luck. Yeah, best of luck if you're following Andy's advice. That's that's all I can say. Look, I'm, I'm sure Andy's very well intentioned in this, but not paying it and, and belligerently obstructing the process that you failed to engage with early on, which is why it's got to that stage, isn't really the way to go about it. If you've got problems paying, genuine problems paying, then get that advice. Get a breathing space in place if you need to. That gives you 60 days. Get a, a plan in place to deal with your debt. Now, a plan in place to deal with your debt doesn't necessarily mean mean payment. It could mean seeing if you're entitled to council tax reduction support. It could be seeing if you're entitled to a discretionary housing payment. It could be seeing if you're entitled to benefits. And actually, a lot of people are entitled to benefits higher than what they, they think they are. And also, uh, people who earn uh, uh, you know up to around 50k can claim benefits. So you know, go to an income maximization company entitled to or turn to us, policy and practices better off calculator. Go and see what's out there. And, and again, a, a debt advice advisor can help you to do all this stuff you could get a debt relief order put in place but what you're also going to need to think about is future liabilities council tax doesn't get turned off so it's really important that you check to see if you are eligible for council tax reduction because that may well help you in the future right so you surely with one more yeah okay so that was the end of it so anyway like i said um you can either <laughs> you can either get your advice from a cab driver and and you don't even need to follow andy's advice for that you can just go and get in any cab in london or, or anywhere across the country and see what a cab driver tells you to do. Maybe it would be better than the advice that, that actually follows the law and, and people who understand the process is inside out. But like I said, don't take my word for it. Go and check out Black Belt Barrister. Go and check out National Deadline, Step Change, Pay Plan. Um, just just go and do something. Just don't do nothing because it will keep escalating and it will get to the point of the enforcement agents coming round if that's the right thing to be done in your particular circumstances. And it could even end up in you being committed to prison. So, yeah, my, my advice is don't follow Andy's advice. All right, latest potatoes, off your pop.